a welcome to this Future of Instructor-Led Training session with Arlo. I'm Mel and I will be your host today. Let's get into it. So first off, Arlo who? So we make software for training providers, uh, particularly training providers who deliver a lot of instructor-led training. I'm in New Zealand, you might have noticed from the accent, um, but we have staff and offices all over the world. So we're in more than 70 countries and we've got customers in all of those countries as well. We've had more than 40,000 courses scheduled on the ILO training management system, and we've been in the game for more than 10 years. So we have a lot of data. We have a lot of, from a lot of our training provider customers, and we have a lot of training providers that have been with us a long time and through a lot of different phases of training. So we're going to draw upon a lot of that today as we go through our observations and our trends and everything we're about to cover in this presentation uh, is drawn from training providers themselves. So what we'll cover today, so training has changed. So our observations, so as mentioned, we're going to pull from a lot of data and a lot of insights from our training providers themselves. Um, shortfalls of remote, benefits of blended learning, and then we're going to take a little bit of a look at beyond blended. So what can we expect to see in terms of training industry trends for 2022 and beyond? Uh, a case study. So we're going to look at one of our training providers, Parallel Project Training, and how they deliver a premium learning experience. And then software. So what actually is a training management system and how can it, how can it benefit your training business? Okay, so training has changed. So since the onset of COVID in early 2020, we've been witnessing rapid changes in the way that learners want to learn. And there's no sign of that slowing down. In fact, there's even more pressure now for training providers to deliver truly effective and accessible training that meets the needs of modern learners. But what does that look like in 2022? So our observations, so in 2020, COVID hit, remote working was up, classroom training was down, remote training was up, Zoom was up, self-paced platforms were up. So you think of the likes of like Go One and Thinkific. Um, we saw a mass rollout of these new learning tech companies actually in 2020, and they were all focused on delivering online self-paced learning. Um, and it seemed like the perfect solution in a rapidly changing training industry online self-paced learning in a world where we couldn't deliver classroom-based learning. Um, and it's flexible, it's accessible. What more could learners want? It was a lot more, as it turned out. And we'll touch on that in a minute. Um, but in 2021, we saw uh, some of those restrictions ease. We saw uh, blended, blended learning and hybrid learning start to emerge. We saw classroom training still um, down. And this is the data, again, we're seeing from our own training providers in, in the Arlo platform. Um, and, and live online and self-paced learning was still kind of the norm. So it main, pre, remained pretty steady for the most part of 2021. Um, and, then, and then as we got to the end of 2021 and the beginning of 2022, or what we want to kind of call the post-COVID world, what we saw was people were really craving that face-to-face -face contact again. And so even, even after kind of working remotely for a couple of years, people were starting to return to their normal work environments, or at least a hybrid approach to that. Um, and we saw the same happen in the training industry. So people were wanting to return to a uh, face-to-face -face way of learning rather than an entirely online approach or self-paced approach. And so we really started to see the rise of blended learning. And we actually started to see a decrease in those online platforms. And um, so while there was that initial surge of them in 2020, um, we've, we've, more recently, we've seen learners and trainers both pull back from them. And we're going to touch on the why in a minute. But so much so, they pulled back from them so much that Thinkific, who was a huge success two years ago, last year actually posted a 26.4 million US dollar loss um, and had to lay off 20% of staff as a result. So yeah, so why wasn't self-paced online learning the kind of perfect sol learning solution we all kind of envisioned two years ago? Um, let's look at those shortfalls in more detail now. So shortfalls of remote self-paced learning. So the first one, poor knowledge retention. So learners don't want to be given a login and left to learn on their own. 
That entirely self-paced way of learning is ineffective in terms of knowledge retention. There's no resources. There's no discussion, like group discussion. There's no ongoing support. There's no connection with the trainer. Um, and in fact, recent studies actually show that online self-paced courses have a completion rate of 15% or less. Some of the studies are even as low as 2%. Um, so that's huge. These people are buying these courses with the hope of gaining a learning outcome from it or a result from it. Um, and then they're not even completing them. So the next one here, so quality isn't guaranteed. So a lot of these platforms have given rise to the training entrepreneur. So what we mean is anyone with a camera and some subject knowledge can create a course and sell it online, but a camera and a platform don't turn skill experts into great instructors. So just because someone has the subject um, knowledge, they're not necessarily good at conveying that in, in, in instructor lead training. And these courses are actually making it harder than ever to discern between a good or a bad course. So harder for the learner when they're enrolling on these courses to discern between what is going to be good or bad, um, to discern what is what is a good or bad trainer. And they're spending their hard-earned money, again, as I touched on before, on courses that, that, that either they don't complete or if they do complete, they're not actually de delivering those results. And then there's no accountability for the trainer either. There's no accountability when it comes to learning outcomes and there's no guarantee for the learner. And the final one here is lack of connection. So I think arguably this is actually the biggest shortfall of remote training. And that's not only just the lack of connection between a learner and trainer, because there often is none, uh, or be but also between learners themselves. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more soon. But first off, don't tell the boss I chucked these slides in at the last minute, but I found this meme and I thought it was quite fitting. So here's me taking a bite out of an apple. And then on the couch here is a whole lot of other apples with just one bite out of them. It's called My Unfinished Udemy Courses. And I went down a bit of a rabbit hole. There's a ton more memes like this, but they all kind of support all of the shortfalls we've just covered in the last slide. So trust me, I know what I'm talking about. I took the online course last weekend. So I think a lot of these online self-paced courses don't hold the credibility um, that you'd expect from, from um, completing a course. So they don't hold that level of credibility if, if you want to go and talk about it in, in a job interview or put it on your CV. There's a few more here. All of my unfinished courses, a new Udemy course, a couple more there. And so what does the future of training look like? So, I mean, while the, the pre-COVID days of a traditional instructor-led training wasn't perfect, like a five-day kind of block room, block course in a classroom. Um, I think what we can see is that neither was the online self-paced approach to learning. So I think it's clear that the future of training is a blended approach. And so for many training providers who made those big changes in 2020 and 2021 and, and moved to more of a focus on self-paced, 2022 for them might mean more of a return to instructor-led training um, or for training providers already offering blended, it may mean more of a balanced approach or even extending the blended learning even further. And we're going to touch on that in a minute too. But first, and you're probably already aware with blended learning, but let's just recap it. So in simple terms, blended learning means providing course content in a variety of delivery formats. So that includes face-to-face, -face, live online, uh, quizzes, videos, podcasts. Um, and for learners, it means it, it provides a richer learning experience than any one format on, it, on its own. So it enables access to content that best suits their, their individual learning styles. For training companies, it's scalable and effective. So it reduces the costs of that traditional classroom-based training. So in, in the sense of venues, food and accommodation. But it allows trainers to continue using their biggest assets, and that's their trainers themselves. And this came through in conversations with training providers here at Arlo, is that a lot of good feedback they get at the end of their courses from their learners is about the actual trainer. So in terms of their subject matter um, knowledge, in terms of how they deliver the course, and in terms of their ongoing support and mentoring as well. Um, so it's important for training providers to be able to utilize that asset. So essentially their biggest asset, their trainers, but in a more cost-effective way. So they're no longer spending, yeah, those, those five days in, in a classroom just reciting information. Um, they can be used for, for more one-to-one -one coaching, mentoring, and support. 
Um, and of course, there's more capacity to deliver more courses as well. So if your instructor has gone from, from spending five days in a classroom as, as well as added travel and accommodation time and costs to, to say only spending one or two hours actually uh, delivering course material in a live environment, um, then of course there's the capacity to use them to deliver more courses and makes your training business more scalable and of course uh, more profitable. So I think we've just kind of covered, covered these off, but let's just go over them again in this format. So the benefits of blended, so for businesses, are scalable. Uh, so you could take your, your courses worldwide, if you like, um, and increase uh, registration numbers. Uh, it's cost effective. We touched on that again before. Increased profits, again, we touched on that. But another thing to know, and a training provider gave me this little nugget when I was speaking to them the other day, is that uh, even though it is costing them less to deliver a blended course than it would to deliver, say, a, a five-day classroom-based course, they're actually charging more for it because it's a more premium learning experience. It's a, an elongated learning course and it's, yeah, get, giving more, um, pro providing more uh, support and one-to-one -one mentoring and coaching to, to their learners. So they're actually charging based on uh, the fact that it's a premium learning experience and delivering more value for the learner, even though it's costing their business less. So it's not necessarily a cost for cost exercise when you're pricing up your courses. It's about the value there. So I thought that was really interesting and a really important thing to take away from here is that you can actually charge more for a blended learning course. And then, of course, it saves time, saves, saves time for your trainers. Um, but also some, some tools like some of the e-learning tools out there can actually automatically mark student assessments as well. So there's a lot more technology out there that you can utilize in your uh, blended learning courses. For the learner, uh, yeah, it's more accessible. It's personalized. So again, you can you can cater content to the variety of different learning styles, and they can learn in the best way that suits them. Um, it's more flexible, um, and there's an there's increased knowledge retention as well because they're able to learn in the best way that suits them. They've got access to uh, online materials, to forums, to um, resource libraries, um, and things like that. So those are the benefits of blended. Um, but let's just look at beyond blended. So there are many obvious ben benefits to, to, to blended. And I think there's no doubt that 2022 will continue to see the growth of it in the training industry. But even within blended, there are ways to extend and improve its effectiveness. And so we've drilled down into four trends that we expect to see in 2022 and beyond uh, that will take your blended learning strategy to the next level. So let's take a look at them now. So the first one here is micro. So I think I've mentioned it multiple times already, but gone are the days of those five-day kind of block courses in a traditional classroom environment. I think we're all in agreement on that. Um, Instructor-led training is much more fluid now. Uh, it's spread out over multiple days, weeks, or even months. And, and delivery is via those multiple mediums. So, so that's blended learning in, in itself, right? But micro-learning is actually about taking it even a step further than that and focusing each of those training sessions uh, around just one single learning outcome. So, so we're no longer thinking about the curriculum as a block of time. So in this day, we will cover such and such material or, or even as a delivery method. So in this e-learning module, we will cover. We're thinking about it as a learning outcome and then working backwards from that to design the delivery. Okay, so, so, so you might need, say, an on-demand video or a podcast uh, to provide context and some basic history and information, and then that might be followed by, say, a one-hour instructor-led training session that covers key information. Uh, there might, there's a chance for learners to ask questions, maybe do a breakout room, connect with other learners, or, or a group workshop to solve a particular problem. And then this would be followed immediately by an e-learning module and a quiz that cements those key learnings and tests knowledge retention. So this would then be repeated for each of the learning outcomes. And then you might bring it all together at the end with, with more quizzes and perhaps a formal exam if that's what's required for your course. Um, so that's just an example there of what it might look like. But that's what we mean by micro-learning. So focus around a single learning outcome. 
And so according to RTPS research, microlearning improves focus and supports long-term retention by up to 80%. So you can see how much value this approach would, would add to your learners uh, and, and as well as your business, because if you can create those kind of results for your learners, you're going to end up with some very happy customers. The next trend here is mobile. Um, and I think something that's important to, to bear in mind here is that it's a trend that's really already here. So your learners are already using mobile devices and whether you like it or not, they're probably already consuming some of your course content on a mobile device. Um, and, and so the study here by Growth Engineering UK, it actually shows that mobile is a trend that's worth investing in. They found that 64% of learners find accessing learning on a mobile device is essential to their progress. And again, that, that might be based around the motivation to complete it if they can access it on a mobile device. 70% of learners are more motivated to learn when they use mobile devices. And mobile learning can increase engagement by up to 72%. Um, so those numbers are, are really quite overwhelmingly positive. Um, so there's no doubt that it's a powerful trend. Um, and I think, I think it's essential that training providers do jump on board. And what, what that looks like is adapting their materials and their deliver, delivery accordingly. Uh, so ensure your course content assignments and resources are mobile friendly. Uh, your websites and LMS systems are mobile responsive or have a downloadable app. And, and your instructor-led online training sessions can be easily attended from a mobile device because your learners may, may be choosing to, you know, um, attend from, from the train on their way to work. They might have a long commute. They might be in a waiting room and want to do it there. Uh, they might be held up somewhere. So all of this content that they're going to consume, um, they, you're gonna, they're going to be way more motivated uh, to do it if they can do it from a mobile device. The next one here is uh, continuous. So that's the next trend, continuous. Um, and it was a British psychologist called Cecil Alec Mace who actually first came up with the idea of spaced repetition uh, in the 1930s, um, in 1932 to be exact. And he wrote about it in his book called The Psychology of Study. And the idea was that spaced repetition uh, could be used to improve learning. And he tested it more than on more than 3,000 students, which is a pretty big, pretty big study back in uh, 1932. And it was proved to be effective. Um, and there's been many more studies since then further proving its effectiveness, um, and including this recent one from the Harvard Business Review uh, that shows that by using spaced repetition, we can remember about 80% of what we learn after 60 days. So in short, space repetition is about studying material in shorter sessions, so over a continuous period of time. So this supports that trend of micro-learning that we touched on before, but it also means providing learning opportunities well beyond the completion of, of what you might deem a traditional kind of training course. So this could be in multiple forms. You could give learners access to an online resource library and they can continue accessing that content well beyond the completion of the course. Uh, they you can ensure they know how to apply the learnings to real world situations. So you get their managers on board too and create feedback loops there. Um, you can create community groups for ongoing peer-to-peer -peer discussions. Uh, automated emails in the following weeks and months with links to surveys and quizzes to reinforce those key knowledge points. Providing ongoing support and access to trainers may, may be an option for you. Um, and then you can even reinforce learnings or extend learnings uh, or build upon, build upon learnings with uh, follow-up courses. So, so that's an um, opportunity for you to upsell by, by um, giving your learners an opportunity to enroll in another course in the future. So it's not only an effective way to improve knowledge retention. So I mentioned earlier, we would talk about that. So this is what I mean there. So continuous learning is a really effective way to improve that knowledge retention, but it also improves return on investment for businesses and creates a premium learning experience that will make more money for your training business. So it's a winning recipe. And so the final trend here, the fourth and final trend is social. Uh, so as noted on earlier slides, it's the lack of per personal connection that really, really stands out when it comes to those shortfalls of remote online training. And you're probably familiar with this. This is the learning pyramid. But highlighted here are those active learning methods. So if you look at the group discussion, practice by doing, and the teaching of others, 
um, and the large percentages associated with them. And, and so just to clarify, those percentages are um, the percentage of knowledge retained from that particular learning method. Um, so as you can see in those active learning methods, those percentages are huge. And so traditionally, the instructor-led training has been based on students listening to a, to a trainer for a lengthy period of time, um, with little to no interaction between learners themselves. But what we're seeing here is the real power of social connection and learning. And this is where instructor-led training, I think, really has an opportunity to step up its game. So by incorporating more active learning methods into an instructor-led training session and encouraging collaboration between learners. So that's the real key part here. Um, but the good news is there's a wide range of tools available um, to support this way of learning. They've, they've really come about in, in recent, recent years. And we're talking about the likes of um, Zoom breakout rooms. So you can use those for collaboration in your, your instructor-led live online training sessions. Uh, Zoom whiteboard, mirror whiteboard. Um, and for pre-course or post-course, you can think of ways to connect learners. Um, so that might be via a forum or via a Facebook or LinkedIn group or, and more. There's lots of, lots of opportunities there. And it's also important to note, we're not ruling out passive learning methods altogether. Um, you can see here, there's, there's still space for those in training. Um, so that's like lecture, reading, uh, reading material, audiovisual demonstration. Um, but what I think we can really see from, from this learning pyramid is the power of learning via a mixture of delivery methods. So this of course lends itself very well to that blended learning approach. So just to quickly recap, so the four blended learning trends we're picking for 2022 and beyond are that micro, mobile, continuous, and social. So if, if you can focus on implementing these trends into your blended learning strategy, and this, I mean, this might be an existing blended learning strategy that you're looking to improve on or extend, or you might just be starting out on this journey. I think either way, they're trends to incorporate now. Um, and you'll be well on your way to training success and uh, staying ahead of your competitors. And so now we're going to look at one of our customers. So um, one of our training providers in the UK is Parallel Project Training. They've adapted the approach to training to deliver a really premium blended learning experience. So we're going to look at um, an example, actually, of one of their most popular courses and how they've structured it. So this is Paul Neighbour here. So he is the co-founder of Parallel Project Training, uh, which was established in 2009 as one of the UK's, they're one of the UK's uh, leading project management training providers. Um, and Parallel was one of the first companies to actually offer a blended learning course for APM training. And our, their co-founder there, Paul, says uh, this approach has enabled corporations and individuals to develop a project, a professional project management capability at a time and place that suits them and using the methods best suited to their learning style. So I think that that really is, is just blended learning in a nutshell. So we're gonna take a look at one of their most popular courses in more detail now and see, you can see how they've structured it. So the project fundamentals qualification, it's one of their most popular courses. Um, it can either be taken as a live online course or a face-to-face -face course. Uh, but both options actually include access to, to online resources, to e-learning modules, um, quizzes, podcasts, on-demand videos, and practice exams. So first off, so uh, their learners complete a pre-course survey online. So once attendees have registered for the course, um, they automatically get access to an e-learning portal uh, with access to that survey. And that's sent out via the Arlo Training Management System without any um, involvement from Parallel. So that's set up to automatically send to the learner as soon as they've enrolled in the course. And then they participate in a two-day course. So they have the option of a live online webinar or a face-to-face -face, um, classroom-based course. Um, but within those two days, there are a lot of breakout rooms, a lot of group discussions, and a lot of workshops and group activities. So there's the, that real peer-to-peer um, -peer learning going on there. Um, and then after that, so they get they then complete e-learning modules. And there's actually eight of those modules that they complete. They are done, at, done one at a time, followed by an online quiz. And each of those online quizzes are to, to des designed to test the knowledge retention and prepare for the upcoming exam. So again, that, that's really micro learning and practice there. So complete one e-learning module, test the knowledge based on that e-learning module, and then do it again for each of the kind of key learning outcomes that they're going to be tested on in that exam. 
And then so finally, they do sit an exam. That's a requirement to get the qualification. Um, but here they have the opportunity to sit the exam in a traditional classroom environment. But they also have the opportunity to uh, sit it online if they prefer. And they use remote proctor software to enable that. And so Paul here has shared uh, his tips for success to deliver really effective blended learning. So the first one, it's no surprise, we've been talking about it the whole way through. That's that catering to all of the different learning styles. So um, creating a range of content from, from you know, written content to uh, podcasts to on demand. So they have all of those different ways of learning when it comes to those e-learning modules that we talked about before. The learners can um, learn in, in whichever way best suits them um, and because by supporting those learning styles you're creating that better engagement and that's where you get that better knowledge retention and the better results the next one again it's um, we've been hearing it all day today is that foster those peer connections um, and parallel has really nailed it so they really encourage peer learning um, with workshops and uh, group discussions and things like that that's where you'll really see again better engagement and improved learning outcomes um, the next one here, I think this is really important. Um, so Paul does too, invest in your online instructor training setup. Um, so when you think about being an instructor, being in a traditional classroom environment, you want to kind of create that same level of engagement and professionalism online as you have done in the classroom. So he says, use good quality headsets, put webcams at eye level, use a pop-up screen or a blurred background. Uh, set up lighting from the side of the screen and ensure your tr trainers are well presented. And then the final thing here is get the right software. So Parallel uh, discovered Arlo when they were actually looking for an event management system. They didn't know training management systems existed until they came across Arlo and could see that it was exactly what they needed to help them better run their training business. Um, and then since implementing Arlo, they've actually been able to save £50,000 per year and course administration costs, move entirely away from paper bookings, manual joining instructions and paper records. Um, and so we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute. So actually, we're going to look at um, software now. We're going to look at the Arlo training management system just briefly and see what it could do for your training business, just as it has done for Paul at Parallel Project Training. So first of all, what is a TMS? So it's not an LMS. So a learning management system will help you deliver those self-paced online courses that we've talked about. Um, and as you know, there's a ton of them out there, but our trainers and learners are, are, are definitely starting to shy away from them. Um, one thing they won't do is they won't help you run your training business and they definitely won't help you deliver instructor-led training. They are really focused on those online self-paced um, delivery elements. Um, so they won't help you cater to different learning styles, all of those important things we've kind of covered today. But of course, a TMS will. So what is a TMS? So a training management system essentially is a streamlined version of what you already do. Uh, it's designed to organize and automate your training operation. So imagine being able to manage your entire training business from one central place. So just here, we're going to quickly look at the challenges that, that most training providers face. And you're probably going to be nodding along um, as I read them out to, to one, two, or even all of them. Um, so manual processes, duplicate data, human errors, spread, spreadsheets, double entry of data, and high admin costs. And guess what? If you think they're hindering your business now, they're only going to get worse once you implement or scale up your blended learning strategy and you've got more systems and more processes to deal with. So do your business and your staff a favor and automate as many manual processes as you can. It's, it's, it's essentially all about reducing uh, the administrative overhead so that you can actually achieve more for your business while doing less. So what is Arlo? So of course, Arlo is a training management system and it's a training management system that's designed to promote, sell and deliver training while also streamlining and helping you grow your business. Your business. So let's look at that streamline and grow um, aspect a little bit more now. So streamline. So here's our friend Paul again from Parallel Project Training. 
um, with, with that quote once again. So we've saved £50,000 per year in course administration costs, moving entirely away from paper bookings, manual joining instructions, and paper records. So essentially what Arlo does is it automates those manual processes and makes your everyday tasks easy. So it automates those course instructions and reminders, uh, transfers, cancellations, and refunds. Um, it can automate your uh, venue and presenter scheduling, and it integrates with, with your website, say your existing WordPress website, um, and other applications that you use. So think of a finance uh, system as well. So it, it saves that duplication of data between two systems there with automation. And it helps you manage those, manage those uh, blended learning journeys. So, and grow. So this is Holly here. So she is the co-founder of a training uh, company called Safe Beginnings over in Canada. Um, and she says, we had a 50% increase in our sales following the implementation of Arlo. We knew that making the transaction easy would result in more checkouts. And Arlo has done that for us. So Arlo can actually help you run targeted marketing campaigns, uh, capture sales leads from your website, offer promotions, um, and, and capture customer feedback. It also has really powerful uh, dashboards and, and reporting as well. So you can see how your courses are tracking and your registration numbers are tracking um, and, and so much more. So what next? I mean, by no means have I done the Arlo training management system justice in those few short slides there. Um, so it, does, it really does do a ton more things that will help make your life easier and will really help you grow in your, and streamline your training business. Um, but you'll hear from one of our sales team members in the next few days. Uh, they'll reach out to you directly uh, via email. And I, do, I really do encourage you to book a short call with them or even a full demo, just so you can get an understanding of what Arlo truly can do for your training business. Um, or, or if you'd rather just dive right in and see for yourself, you can start a free trial on um, our website. So just head along to www.arlo.co. So that's uh, .co um, and start a free trial there. So a free 14-day trial, no credit card required, no strings attached. Just get into the system and see what it can do for you. Um, and that's it from me. So that was the uh, future of instructor-led training. Hope you got some good nuggets out of the session today and we hopefully will talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.